The Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that the last people to come out to Dajjal all the Antichrist will be women. The last people to come out to Dajjal or the Antichrist will be women. And a man would have to return to his home and tie down his wife and sister and daughter to protect and preserve them from Dajjal, the Antichrist. Indicating that when Dajjal's mission is close to its climax, something strange is going to sweep the world of women. That they are going to be deceived, utterly deceived. That what would appear to them to be the road to progress, which they will eagerly grasp and embrace, what would appear to them to be a revolution in the world of women, the likes of which mankind never witnessed before, would in fact be the Jal's deception. I believe you will share with me the view that the prophecy of the Blessed Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, is today being unfolded in the modern feminist revolution and its so-called struggle for women's liberation. But that civilization also gave us women who are dressed and yet naked. All through history, women were always covered. But now, they are dressed and yet naked. It started with the taking off of the head covering. Oh, now I'm free. I'm free from this bondage, the covering of the head. Okay, let's see where you're going. What they call a baby. Baby. And then the arm is become bare. Oh, you're making progress. And then the skirt starts coming up and reaches up to the knee. Oh, you're making progress and you're proud of your new freedom. And then she starts to become even more provocative in her dress. Allah has created her beautiful. And as she takes off her clothing, the provocation for men increases. <coughs> Is this happening by accident? It starts over there and then like a virus it spreads to the rest of the world. The revolution in dress because she is dressed and yet naked, obviously has a sexual repercussion. And it leads to a sexual revolution. Where the barriers which were built by society concerning the sexual bond are now dismantled. And eventually, Sex is as free as the sunshine. You come a long way, baby. Sex is now as free as the sunshine. Well then, the implication would be universal zina. 
people eventually won't bother about getting married. Marriage is for the birds. Yeah, we the young ones, we live a different way. We, sh we shack up. <laughs> a boy and a girl decide we want to live together, we shack up. And we say to society, this is a new lifestyle. We shack up. And when we have a falling out, we just shack out. <laughs> and this is zina becomes now commonplace and acceptable. So in a similar way, what used to be considered to be detestable, zina, now becomes commonplace and acceptable. Is this happening by accident? If it is not, then we ask what is the explanation for it? We have an explanation in Islamic eschatology and this is ours. If you differ, then please tell me what is yours. Nabi Muhammad explained to us the sexual revolution. It's not just zina. <laughs> no. Eventually, you reach saturation point in the number of women you can have. And then it no longer excites you. So then you turn to something else. Because now men will dress like women. Yes. Why would a man want to dress like a woman? Answer? So that he can attract another man. And so the sexual revolution eventually must spawn, spawn homosexuality and lesbianism. Inevitable. And that is already occurring in the world today. But that's not all. Eventually, you have to search beyond homosexuality and lesbianism to get your, your high. Nothing else is working now, and I'm in search of that high, to become high. So then you turn to children. And there is sufficient in the world today to tell you that it is spreading the sexual exploitation of children. Is that the end of the road for the sexual revolution? No. You still have animals left behind. You still have animals. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam gave us the explanation for this phenomenon, this sexual revolution. And he said to us that this was Dajjal sexual revolution. If you have another answer in your university, in the Department of Gender Affairs, come on and give it to us. We are waiting for it the Department of Gender Affairs of your ministries or of your universities. Hmm? Ours is, this is the job. In other words, the job will be brainwashing women and they will be so mesmerized, so hypnotized by the job, so totally captivated that they will lose the capacity to think properly. <laughs>